The government's released the 2022 Petroleum Exploration Release. It's been criticised heavily by the Greens and the crossbench. Earlier, I spoke to the Minister for Trade and the Special Minister of State, Don Farrell. I began by asking him about that criticism. Look, these are um, uh, standard uh, decisions that are made by, uh, by Australian governments uh, each, uh, each year. Um, we... we um, we sell about $70 billion worth of uh, gas to, um, um, company, uh, to uh, countries overseas and uh, it's part of our longer term uh, um, plans to uh, ensure reliable uh, electricity supplies until we can uh, get to that point where uh, renewables take their place. So uh, gas, for instance, is a transition uh, fuel. Um, we want to be a renewable energy um, uh, superpower, but we're not going to be that overnight and uh, we need to continue to have the, uh, the lights turned on uh, in Australia until such time as we can make that uh, transition to uh, a renewable future. So the crossbench has been very critical of this announcement, also indicating, Don Farrell, that they might move in the parliament to try and block any legislation when it comes to new fossil fuel projects. Uh, look, I hope not, um, Kieran. Um, what we're doing is a very sensible balance uh, between uh, existing needs uh, and, uh, and the future of uh, a renewable uh, industry. Um, we've got to do that to ensure that the lights uh, stay on until such time uh, as we can reliably switch to uh, renewables. That's going to happen. We've got two, two targets here, uh, Kieran. Uh, we've got uh, a 2030 target of uh, 43% uh, and a net zero target of 2050. Um, we're not moving to that overnight. It's going to take um, some time uh, and we're making sensible decisions on behalf of, uh, of the Australian people uh, to ensure that uh, we, we get to that renewable future but get to it in a sensible, um, in a sensible way and uh, in a sensible period of time. Does this announcement show that Anthony Albanese is more pragmatic when it comes to these matters than many po people might have given him credit for prior to the election? No, what it shows, what it shows uh, Kieran, is that um, Anthony Albanese is doing exactly what he said he would do in the lead-up to the election, uh, and that is uh, we'll move to a 43% uh, uh, renewable uh, target by 20. Uh, uh, 2030 and a net zero target by uh, by 2050. What Anthony Albanese is doing is exactly what he told the uh, the Australian people. Now, it may be that other groups um, said different things to uh, to the Australian people, but we're the government. Anthony Albanese is the prime minister, uh, and he's doing exactly what he told the Australian people he would do. Along with the trade portfolio, you're also the Minister for Tourism. I know you've held a roundtable in the lead-up to the Jobs and Skills Summit with the sector. It's one of the most severe shortages is in hospitality and tourism. Is the answer short-term migration in terms of both skilled and low-skilled workers? Uh, look, you're right, uh, Kieran. This, uh, this uh, sector of the Australian economy has been very badly hit by uh, the, uh, the pandemic. Um, we've got, uh, as you said, I've had a, a round uh, table and having uh, more over the, the next week in the lead up to the, the Jobs and Skills uh, Summit next week. Um, we've got to have a range of solutions to uh, solve this problem. What happened during the, the pandemic was um, this industry became uh, an unreliable source of uh, income for a lot of people. Because there were labour shortages uh, in other areas of the economy, they've moved to more secure work. Um, part of my job is to convince people that this is a good industry, it's a reliable industry into the future, and people should now come back in. In order to get there, um, we're going to have to do a range of things. Um, the TAFE system, which the previous government uh, really let go over the last 10 years, we've got to rebuild that. Sure, we've got to bring people um, from overseas uh, for, um, you know, a period of time in order to fill those gaps. Part of the problem, of course, is that we relied very much on backpackers, on international students to, uh, 
to help out in this industry. Um, they're not in Australia anymore. Um, so um, we've got to have a long-term solution to mm -hmm. this problem so that if, God forbid, we ever get into a situation like we've uh, experienced over the last uh, two years, uh, that we're not reliant on, uh, on overseas workers. I'd much prefer, in the longer term, to see Australians doing this job, uh, these, uh, these jobs. Minister, do you think that there needs to be a low-skilled visa? Well, there's a lot of talk about skilled migration, but Matt Keane of the New South Wales government believes that there needs to be a low-skilled visa as well. That seems to me something that would suit the tourism industry. Uh, look, we're going to have to come up with a range of solutions. That's why we're out there consulting uh, with, uh, with industry. Um, and we've got the summit next week. I'm not going to prejudge uh, the outcome of uh, the summit's uh, findings, but all of these things can be canvassed uh, at the, uh, the meeting uh, next week. Um, and I'm very confident that uh, under uh, Prime Minister Albanese and uh, Jim Chalmers' uh, supervision, we're going to come up with a series of solutions which will pro provide long-term security to the tourism uh, industry to ensure that we don't have labour shortages into the future uh, and that people can safely go back into this industry knowing that they're going to have a reliable source of income. The ACTU is calling for industry-wide bargaining. It hasn't gone down that well with the business lobby groups. Is the government open to that? Look, again, um, the ACTU, just like... Um, all of the uh, other, uh, you know, business organisations will have an opportunity to put their points of view at the summit uh, next week. Um, the idea at the summit is to try and get a consensus on how we move forward to solve some of these really serious um, labour shortage uh, issues. Um, the ACTU, uh, the Business Council, other employer organisations will all have an opportunity to put their point of view and I'm hopeful and, I'm, in fact, I'm confident that at the end of the day, um, what we'll see is a sensible um, compromise situation uh, that uh, is a pathway to the future to bringing back stable employment, particularly in the industry that I've got to look after, which is tourism. And, and do you think that's got potential merit, an industry-wide negotiating capacity that the unions are calling for? From your experience, both with the tourism sector specifically, but more broadly, is there potential here, given the enterprise bargaining system is not working as well as it should? No, look, it's, uh, it's true that the enterprise bargaining uh, system uh, was not working under the previous, uh, previous government. Uh, of course, one of the uh, very early things that the, um, uh, the uh, Albanese government did was to support a... Um, uh, in excess of 5% uh, wage rise for the lowest, uh, lowest paid workers. Um, the ACTU and all of the business community are going to have an opportunity to put forward their ideas. I don't want to prejudge what might come out of uh, those uh, discussions next week. What I am hopeful of and what I'm confident of uh, is that uh, we'll have a sensible solution come out of that meeting uh, that'll give us a roadmap uh, into the future that we can solve uh, the problems that... Um, uh, are presently before us. You're also uh, the minister, special minister of state, obviously looking into electoral matters of... too. I have to. You've got a few hats to wear. I know as a, across a lot your of, portfolios. Lot of, lot of hats, but... <laughs> Indeed, and with the standing committee on electoral matters, they've announced what they're going to look into. What's your priority in terms of reform here? Is it those real-time disclosures for donations? Uh, look, that's, uh, that's one of them. I've sent a, a number of issues to, um, uh, to the committee. Um, we, we want more trans transparency uh, and accountability in terms of our political uh, process. Um, that means uh, reducing the disclosure cap. That means um, uh, introducing real-time uh, disclosure for, uh, for donations and a range of other things that uh, we are proposing, uh, proposing there. Truth, truth in advertising in... Uh, uh, in political campaigns. Um, but look, um, the committee gets an opportunity to consider this and, and other submissions. Uh, other parties will have other proposals. Uh, again, I'm not prejudging uh, the outcome of those, uh, that, that inquiry, but what I'd like to see in the longer term um, is a more accountable, 
uh, and a more open electoral uh, system. And uh, I'm, I'm hopeful, in fact, I'm confident that the committee will come forward with some sensible recommendations uh, in that regard. Um, and I'll be very pleased to prosecute them uh, in the parliament to ensure that at the next election, uh, we've got uh, greater um, openness about the way in which we conduct our electoral affairs. What's the most important move here? Is it the reduction of the threshold for disclosure, the real-time transparency? What's the number one move here? Uh, look, they're all important. I'm not going to uh, categorise them uh, in that way, uh, Karen. Um, all of those um, changes will contribute to a more transparent electoral system. That's what the Albanese government wants. That's what we promised in the lead-up to the last uh, election. And that's what I'd like to deliver to the Australian people for the next election. And finally, would you be open to more senators for the ACT in the Northern Territory? That's something that the committee's also looking at. Yes, look, we've, we've referred that to, uh, to the committee. Again, I'm not going to prejudge uh, the outcome of those uh, discussions. Um, the, the, there's obviously an argument that the population has been increasing in both of, um, both of those territories, um, and they've got an argument that they should have an increased uh, representation. Um, but again, I'm not going to prejudge the outcome of the, uh, the committee's inquiries, and uh, I look forward to, to reading their final report and uh, seeking to implement whatever it is that they, uh, they come forward with. Trade Minister and Special Minister of State, Don Farrell, appreciate your time today on the program as, as always. Thank you. Thanks, Karen.